Okay, so you guys remember the 2008 S2000 that we bought for the build. Well, like we talk about any S2000, they never get all the maintenance that they should get. So if you're buying an S2000, just bought one, have one sitting in the driveway or any other car for that matter. Fluids are something that is still relatively inexpensive and should never be overlooked. So we're gonna go ahead and do the fluids on this car. We're gonna show you a little bit of detail, how to do them and what the old fluids look like. First off, let me show you what we are gonna do. So for the S2000, engine oil and filter, only use an OEM filter. Transmission, the fluid that we like, that we've found makes the noticeable gain is the Royal Purple. I'll show you that in a minute, show you the part numbers. Differential, we're gonna run Mobile One 9140. Yes, not the factory stuff. This is a little heavier, does a better job cushioning. We're gonna flush the clutch fluid. We're gonna flush the brake fluid. All right, one important thing here is the part number. Make sure it's not the generic Honda filter. Make sure it is a PCX filter. Oil, you know it. Use your favorite oil. Don't care what it is, change it. Don't be cheap, don't stretch your oil. Brake fluid, this is the one that we use for our street cars. DOT 3 slash 4, it's a good fluid. It is synthetic. It's reasonably priced. We use it in the brake and in the clutch. Now the Royal Purple, we've been asked about this. We don't make anything on this. We don't get any special deals. They don't tell us to use it. This came from me experimenting when I had an S2000. I tried several different fluids to try and get the transmission to shift better. A lot of S2000 owners seem to think it's the best transmission in the world. Well, when you drive something else and then go back and forth, you realize it's a good transmission, but it's still a little notchy, a little clicky. This is one of the fluids I tried at the end that made the noticeable difference. They're calling it Synchromax. I think it's the exact same formula as the GM Synchromax. They've just cut, uh, put a few different things in there. The stock number is 01512. You're gonna need two of these bottles right here. Mobile One 75140. Very good diff fluid. We've used it in our S2000 diffs for a while. Good friend of mine, Ben from Putty Mod Racing, does a lot of differential builds. He also recommends this and actually turned me onto it uh, a few years ago. And of course, this does include the limited slip friction modifier, something that you do want to make sure is in your diff. Okay, so changing your oil, as simple as it sounds, you'd be amazed how many times people can ruin it. And even though at the dealership, often the oil is considered like the bottom of the barrel job it's probably one of the most important if you screw it up you ruin an engine if you screw up an alternator install it doesn't charge or it ruins a belt you kind of get my idea here so here's the tools you're going to need and i encourage you to learn to do this yourself it is not difficult these are the tools you're going to need it's super super simple on an s2000 first when you buy the oil filter, ask for a drain washer. Some dealerships will give you this. Some of them will charge you for it. If they charge for it, it's worth it. Get it before you drain your oil. It's an aluminum washer, but it fits the ball perfect. Your favorite 3 8 ratchet wrench right here. 17, this is to fit the drain bolt. Again, very, very simple. Now this tool I showed in a past video, I've had this going on 15 years. It's absolutely terrific. This is our oil filter tool. I've tried them all, and this has by far been my favorite tool. I'll try and link this. This is, as you see, it says made in the USA. There is some cheaper versions. This is the one you want. I will put the link in the description, but let me show you real quick how it works and why it's so beneficial. So the oil filter tool right here, what makes it so good is that as you turn this to break it loose, these jaws grip tighter. So the more pressure it takes to turn, the more they grip. They are spring loaded like this, very clever. Well, the S2000 filter, the PCX is the larger housing. I wanna show you on the new one right here. This is about as large a filter as this tool fits. It's almost stretched to the limit to fit on here. Well, how this works is you see the jaws are gripping the filter right here. And as you turn this counterclockwise, it's gripping tighter and tighter. So if it does slip, it only slips a little bit, grabs into the filter housing, and you can break this loose 
whole lot less hassle. I've seen so many horror stories of people trying to get these off with vice grips, punching holes through them, all of these kind of things. You can really make a mess of it. This makes your life so much easier. It's almost a one hand operation. Hold it like this, spin this around, open the jaws. You can hold it with one hand. You can slide it on the filter. The filter is on the side of the engine. You can get this in like here, one hand operation, slide it on your filter, break it loose. Couldn't be easier. So simple as this sounds, I just want to make sure that you don't mess it up. And again, I'm just trying to be a little extra cautious with you. 17, use the 17 closed wrench. Don't try and do this business. There's a good chance it's going to slip and round off the bolt. So this, again, counterclockwise, as silly as it sounds. I've seen people tighten these things. You're going to hold it in this position. You're going to pull this part of the wrench forward. Now, of course, if the engine is hot, the bolt is going to be hot and so is the oil coming out of course you can do this and wait till it comes out and make sure your bucket is close enough to catch the oil now a simpler idea that we use we take a magnet right here we put it on the end of the bolt if you can see let me get out the shadow it fits right in the end of the bolt like this and you're going to twist this and it's strong enough to twist all right from the same position i'm going to hold our wrench and filter tool in one hand. I'm going to put it right on the side of the filter here. And you can operate this from the bottom of the car with one hand, super easy. And again, counterclockwise, you're going to pull this towards you. And this, get about half a turn on it, take the tool off, and you can finish it off by hand. make sure your drain bucket is positioned correctly and that will catch the same oil so the old filter was a Honda filter that was something that I looked at when I went to go look at the car this to me tells me a lot about the car ownership often we'll see the small Honda filter which is the wrong one and you see it installed so many times. This filter is about a $15 filter where the generic Honda filter is about $4. This is a much higher volume. This is the filter you want to use. Don't go cheap and buy the small filter. So taking the new filter, one thing that we like to do, this is a little OCD, but it's uh, some people consider it preventive wear. You're going to put some new oil in the filter before you install it. This helps pre-lube the system so when you're cranking it rather than having to fill up the oil filter with oil and circulate the oil this speeds up that process and it's less time the engine runs with low oil pressure. Okay so the drain bolt right here this is the washer I just removed and even though it is in good shape you can see it's starting to squash and it's got a shape to it well, often if you take this off and put it back on, it will cause it to leak. You can reuse these two or three times. But again, as cheap as this is, just replace it with a brand new one. There's less chance of leaking on your driveway. So once you have the new oil filter screwed on, I put these on by hand as tight as I can get them. You don't want to use a tool to put them on because then you might not get them off. But make sure if you can, if you can use a rubber glove or something to grip, tighten that up as much as you can. You don't want that backing off. Now, once you've decided what your favorite oil is, you want to put in 5.1 quarts of oil, which is basically a five quart container and a little bit more. All right, next thing on the list is the transmission. And again, this is very, very easy. I'm gonna show you the tools that you need for this. Couldn't be easier. You're gonna take your 3H ratchet again and your 17 millimeter wrench. This is gonna break the drain. This is gonna break the fill. And again, before you break these loose, go ahead and get the sealing washers for the bolts. So the bolts you're gonna be looking at here, this is the drain. This is the fill, it's pretty easy. You're gonna be draining it all the way out when you fill it. This is the fill line, which you're gonna wait until it just comes out of here to know that it's full. Now this is another tip. Always break the fill loose before the drain. That way if there is a problem with this, 
you're not driving around with no fluid, you're not going to strand yourself, you're not going to be stuck in the driveway. So break this loose first, then your drain. So for the drain here, another trick, use a 3 8 extension. Gives you a little bit more room to back that out before the fluid comes out. Next you're going to need this hand pump right here. This is available at your parts store as well as Amazon, those kind of places. I'll put the product list in, in the description so you can order one of these before you get started so there's no surprises. And you don't drain the fluid out and find out that you can't put it back in. We use this a lot as you see by the discoloration but whatever fluid you use, if you switch fluid, always put it in the new fluid and pump a little bit through just to make sure that the old fluid doesn't circulate and go back into the bottle. All right, so once it is up to full, it will just leak out of that hole right there. You don't want it gushing out. You want it just pouring out to let you know that it is full. And of course, put it back in and torque it down. All right, next differential, the tools you're gonna need for this, 23 millimeter wrench, preferably a closed end, 24 millimeter socket, some breaker bar that fits your socket, of course, and your mobile one, 75 140 so just as before there is a fill and a drain this is the fill right here right on the very bottom this is the drain now make sure you have those tools before you break these loose i've seen people use crescent wrenches and vice grips and all kinds of things to get this one loose it is a pain it's a 23 this one is worse you can only use a socket but make sure you can break the fill first Again, if you can't break that loose and you drain the fluid, you can't put fluid back in. All right, so the drain right here, this is probably the worst smelling fluid you will ever witness, experience. Don't get it on you. Whatever you do, don't get it on you. So that is pretty dark. And again, this is fluid that's almost never changed. Even when you buy a certified Honda from the dealership, for some reason, they don't feel the need to change this fluid. Now. On the drain plug right here, there is a magnet. I wanna show you here in a second how to look at it, but if you spray it off with brake cleaner very lightly, you can see the material get left behind. It'll give you another indication of how good the differential is. All right, so spray it lightly with brake cleaner and the oil will run off and you'll see the material left behind. Now it's normal to see a little bit of material on here. You just don't wanna see any big lumps or chunks sitting on there. I see it's got a little bit of material, but it's completely normal. We're in good shape. So once you've got your drain plug in, you're going to pump in pretty much a full bottle of this. It's like 0.9 I think it takes to fill it up. Again, fill it all the way up until it starts coming out the fill and then replace your fill bowl. All right, so we are good there. Next is clutch fluid and brake fluid flush. All right, so next thing is going to be the fluid change, brake and clutch. Now, this isn't particularly bad, but as you see, it's kind of dark. It's got that oily look, the clutch. Same thing, this is just very normal. We see this even when you buy those certified Hondas that uh, apparently they've had the 484 point inspection. I don't know what those points inspect, but for some reason they overlook this. So there's a few ways to do this. I'm going to show you the easiest way. You can buy the machines, you can buy the pressurized systems, you can buy the vacuum systems. The easiest way is to get your buddy and you're going to pump this through. So the idea is this is a closed system. It has fluid in it. You do not want air in there. You cannot introduce air in the system. Air compresses, fluid doesn't. So if you ever get that really spongy pedal, typically there's air in the system and you've got to get that air out. All right, so excuse my crude drawing, but I'm going to try and use this drawing to explain what is happening right here. This is your brake pedal or clutch pedal. This is your reservoir and master cylinder. This is what is pushing the high pressure fluid down your line to, in this case, the caliper for the brake. This is your bleeder. It's coming off with a hose into a container. So this is the easiest way. The trick is this part is air. This is obviously fluid. The red is fluid. Same as here. We don't want this fluid to drop down and air get into the system. 
this over here needs to be just fluid, no air. If you get air in there, it is going to create a spongy pedal. So as you're pumping, you want to keep this full. Now what you're going to do, the easiest way to flush this out is to break this loose and continuously pump this. Long, slow pumps, don't try and do any uh, super fast pumping. You could cavitate in here and draw air. Typically on a break, do four or five pumps, add some fluid. Four or five pumps, add some fluid. Don't let this overfill. When you do drain this, don't let this get below this straw because it can suck air back into the system. So once you've flushed adequate fluid through, you'll see this start to turn all kind of gross colors. You'll see this start to get more and more clear and the, uh, the, the dirt and debris in here starts to kind of tumble and it gets pushed through. What we do first, I'm going to show you this, but we suck as much of this out as we can, refill it with some clear fluid. It does suck some of the debris out. But right now, I'm trying to just explain the easiest way to flush your system. So once you've flushed adequate amount through here, it looks like everything is clean. Now you're going to actually bleed it. And this is very important to follow this sequence. Close this bleeder. Now when I say close it, you're only going to open it about a quarter of a turn. But close this. Have your guy in the car push this all the way to the bottom. Break this loose, close it. Release this pedal, check your fluid. Press the pedal down, hold pressure, break this loose, then close it. When you break this loose, your pedal will suddenly go all the way to the bottom. Don't release it, close this. Always make sure this has fluid in, make sure this doesn't overflow. Follow that procedure four or five times also make sure you do it in a sequence every car has a sequence meaning one wheel second wheel third wheel for instance s2000 this is the first wheel as you see we have our little bleeder setup right here we have our wrench on the caliper front left is always number one on an s2000 front right number two rear right number three clockwise around the car start here then here and so on. So it's starting to go clear now. This is after running a full quart through this and it's getting all that cloudiness out and junk. So we're still doing on the driver's side. I typically pump most of the volume out here and then start going through the whole system after that. So now we've flushed that through. We have nice clear fluid. We've sucked down the clutch. You can see actually how dark that is. Now this is something that nobody uh, really talks about. The fluid in here is almost like a hydraulic cable so the fluid passing through the hoses and through the master and slave has you know material in it has debris in it it's amazing when you change this how much smoother the whole operation gets it's like putting a brand new cable in it it's it's so noticeable in the paddle it's actually surprising all right you see how much better the clutch cylinder looks now it's got flushed through and clean fluid clutch actually feels smoother now which is what I was talking about now of course once you're done with that the cap was pretty contaminated go ahead and clean the cap so that material and debris doesn't end up going back into your system and contaminating it again all right so the fluids are now up to date this is what we recommend with all s2000s we just showed you what we do on a daily basis we get a lot of cars coming in even Cars that are just being purchased, this is what we recommend you do. Now this car only has 18,000 miles. Just as a side note, the coolant is usually good for 100,000 miles, even though we're extra OCD and picky. We don't see any issues with the coolant, so I wouldn't change that unless it looks bad. Obviously check the reservoir and if it looks contaminated, it looks like it's got dirt and it's not like a nice clear, either a bright green or a, bli a bright blue, consider changing that other issue serpentine belt now again this car only has 18,000 miles a belt is good for more than 18,000 miles but it's a 2008 so that belt is a 12 year old rubber belt so 
that I'll do on a separate video. Super easy to replace that. If you're doing it before you watch our video, just pay attention to the routing. Now this is again, take pictures or even draw yourself a diagram on a piece of paper or a, a scratch pad. Write down the orientation so that when you put it back, you don't spend half your afternoon digging around in that hole trying to get the belt back on. Super easy. This is the tensioner, by the way, 14 millimeter. We'll show that in another video, but this is something we are gonna do. We have plans for this car, so that's gonna get done with the next plan. Also, spark plugs, if you're not boosting the car, the plugs that come in are good for 100,000 miles. However, I would check them anything after 60, check the gap. And again, spark plugs are not that expensive. I would replace them if they're questionable. Again, you didn't buy this car to be cheap. You're not trying to limp it to work and save as much money as you can. You bought this car because it's an enthusiast car. You love the car, you're into it. This is part of the passion of owning it is to keep it absolutely tip top. If you're gonna keep it stock, anything over 65,000 miles, if it was me, I would change the plugs and put brand new OE plugs in it. The car will thank you later. So in a future video, we're gonna talk about wheels and tires for this car. We're also gonna talk about the brake package. We are changing the brakes to our LHT brake package and of course suspension. We're gonna try and put that all in one complete video. So keep an eye on that. Right now it has stock brakes. They are in good shape, but we are gonna change them to our brake package. And of course, we're gonna be lowering it for aesthetics and for handling. All right, so this one is good. All the fluids are fresh. This is how we want it when we start modifying it, bring everything up to date. Everything is set. He's gonna go ahead and reset the oil trip, even though I wouldn't go by that. It is a little optimistic. It will make you drag your oil changes out for 10,000 miles, which we've already gone over that. So there it is. Next thing is gonna be brakes, suspension, wheels, tires, and aesthetics. We're working on a new lip, by the way, a good friend of mine, Jason, thank you so much. He, he is hooking us up with an OEM lip. We just gotta get it, do a little bit of cleanup and paint it, then we can get rid of this terrible fitting, terribly matched front lip. Thanks for watching, see you on the next video. Don't forget, enjoy your cars.